locally our sausage patties were on sale. Um, there was a two flats for five dollars, so sixteen for five dollars, and I bought I don't know eight or ten flats. And I'm canning them so that we can use them for breakfast in the future or dinner or whatever. Um, so right now I'm frying them up because it gives it extra flavor. Uh, it also helps protect the texture of the meat. If I were to can the sausage raw, it would stick to itself. And I would have one big lump of sausage after it canned. This way they can individually because the outside has been cooked. Uh, the flavor is there and they will not stick to each other. So what I'll do is I'll put the salt in there. These are pints and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight in here. These are one and a half pints and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve in here. So these get half a teaspoon salt and I'll fill it up with water or chicken broth. I'm actually boiling chicken right now so I might use chicken broth. And these will get um, three-fourths of a teaspoon of salt and I'll fill it up and can them and then I just sit on the shelf. It's so much easier than having them frozen, having to wait for them to thaw. I can have, you know, 50, 100 jars like this sitting on my shelf, but if I tried to put that in my freezer, it would fill up my freezer and I wouldn't be able to fit anything else in there. So making your food as shelf stable as you possibly can is really important. So now I'm ready to close up my jars and get them ready for the canner. I have washed and dried lids. I have my meat inside of my jars and I could have just stacked it but I also put three down the sides to get more in there and so they didn't jiggle and I had plenty of space. Any liquid from here you can save and turn into gravy to go over biscuits or toast, anything you'd like. Um, because it's flavored. It's really good. You always add salt <clears throat> to anything that you can. One, it helps preserve it, but also you've got an osmosis diffusion situation going here where your meat is very well flavored, really tastes good, and it has salt and it has sugar in it. The water that you pour in here doesn't have anything in it. So what happens? The salt and the sugar gets pulled out of the meat into the liquid. Your meat then tastes half as good, not as great. Your, your liquid is pretty good. It actually tastes pretty good, but it's stolen all the flavor from the meat. The way you, you combat that is you add salt. Sometimes I'll add sugar. This is not a really sweet sausage. It's more of a salty sausage, so I'm not worried about adding sugar. Um, when I do, I add equal parts salt and sugar. This is my salt right here. So for pints, it gets half one teaspoon. That's a quarter teaspoon. So it gets half of a teaspoon. And this just prevents the meat from getting all that flavor sucked out of it. It also helps with the preservation too. And I need about three quarters for these one and a half pints. And if you see in the background, my daughter is actually cutting up the pork loin into cubes for me. Alright, so we have that. And I'll set that aside. Next step is to fill them with water. And I always fill up to about the first bumpy line on the outside. So if you look, each one of these, there's a bumpy line right here. And I try and fill it up to there. If you fill it higher than that, because this has grease in it, and inside it's boiling and boiling as it's processing, all that grease comes up to the top. Sometimes it squishes out through the rubber rim. Um, it can cause a problem with the seal. So I try and keep my uh, water level lower if possible. It's fine if the top is up above the water level. It's not going to hurt it in any way. It may discolor it slightly, but it's completely fine to eat. Like I said, keep this liquid because it makes amazing gravy. You can also add this liquid to beans if you're making bean soup, chili, um, the saucy beans like they do in the south. 
anything that you want to add some extra flavor to, it's great to use. Okay, the next step will be cleaning off the rim. The rim is this flat surface right here. It's completely flat and this ring gets screwed on, the lid gets put on, we have rubber right here. It sits on this flat rim and it gets squished and it creates a vacuum inside as it's processing and this gets sucked down onto the rim. You want to make sure there is nothing on this rim because if there's a little piece of meat, spice, a blob of oil, anything sitting there and it prevents this rubber from sealing onto your glass, your jar is compromised and it's going to go bad. There is no seal. So what we do is we take vinegar, any kind of vinegar, because it's acidic and it cleans very well, it wipes off any grease, anything that's clinging to the rim. And you just go around, I like to go around twice, and wipe it off. That one's completely done. I also like to check and make sure I only have one ring or one lid because I have accidentally had two. Put them on, tried to process it, and it didn't seal. I opened it up and there were two of these on there instead of one. So. Even if it looks like there's one in there, I always lift it up to look. Yes, there's one, so I put it on. And when you put it on, you tighten it. You can see I can swing it back and forth here, and then I just go a little bit more. I'm not cranking it down so tight, it's like on there really hard. So that one's ready. And I'll do the rest the same way. When I'm done with all of this, I'm going to put these in the refrigerator until tomorrow because I want to have a full canner when I do this. I don't want to do just a couple at a time. It's perfectly safe to put these in the refrigerator overnight or even for a day or two. Bring them out, get them to room temperature or almost to room temperature. Put them in your canner. Use cold water, not warm, not hot, to fill up your canner um, up to the amount that you need for pressure canning and then turn the heat on. If you do it any other way your jars can break from thermal shock. So. That one's ready to go, and I'll just continue to do the rest. Here are my, how many did I have? I had 10 times 8, so 80, uh, 80 sausage patties that I fried first. So I have them stacked in here, and then on the side, so that they aren't just loose and flopping around, I put some down the side. I filled it up. With really greasy things, a lot of times you do lose water. Um, I had the water up to this level. It's now down to here. That's perfectly fine. Uh, this may turn a slight funny color, but it's completely sterile in here at this point, so the meat is fine. The only air that's in here is right here, so it may discolor it slightly, but it's still fine to eat. So out of 80, I ended up with 2, 4, 6 of the one and a half pints and then two pints. And this liquid, when you drain it, makes delicious gravy. You can add it to chili, you can add it to mashed potatoes, you can add it to anything that you want extra flavor. It's really, really good, so always try and save that if you can.